Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm gonna be going through three tower adventures. The first one is just called The Tower. It's by Lola Johnson. It's a 21 page PDF puzzle dungeon. It's full of great puzzles, little tricks and traps, uh, little ideas that I think would be great to take and adapt into your own adventure. So I'll go through that. The second one is the Sky Tower of Belkzos, which is an Argosa sandbox adventure. So this is one of those, I think it's a free adventure you can get for Tales from Argosa or Tales from Argosa. Uh, it's out right now. I've, I've just reviewed Tales of Argosa. It's a great uh, setting or system. And here is an adventure pre-made for it if you want to run it. It's a great one. I'll go through it. And then the last one is probably the longest, well, it certainly is the longest, and I think probably the most interesting of the three. It's called Let Us Build a Tower. Into the, which is a mythic Bronze Age adventure in Babel. This is 140 pages, and it's a really cool, clever idea for how to do this sort of endless tower. But it's really cool, so I'll come to it. Let's start with the tower. This is a really cool adventure. Basically, you just have 10 floors, and each of them has a different puzzle, trick, trap, little thing going on and uh, you can check it out and see if the sort of puzzles that you're interested in are are the kind of things you'd want and there's you know illustrations that go along with it there are little bits and things uh for you to for you to use so for example here's corridors if you want to put a corridor in your tower you have a few options you can just do an unremarkable corridor or you can do the skipping corridor where you have to do a particular pattern to cross otherwise you get sent back um or you can do the immortalized in paint which is a cool little like creepy thing happening and the upside downstairs which is how to traverse the stairs at the end of the hall really cool stuff the hanging tree come to uh, a door at the very enter into a hall or into a room of your tower and it's just dark and then there's a riddle you have to solve and it involves this pear tree and here's one that i really like it's the arcane laboratory it involves light and doors and torches and so the torches each cast a different kind of light and you have to figure out what the color would be and which is the right door and if you don't creatures can appear or you can get take some damage probably by getting shoved out of the door or you can fall into a, a really funny trap um it's not actually dangerous but it's just kind of a funny role-playing moment that's the sort of thing you can uh do, do with this place i'm not going to go through the whole book because it's only 21 pages and um, the ideas are kind of why you'd buy this but i do think it's really really cool and uh, you guys should check it out and again i'll go back to the table of contents and you can see the names of the rooms there's the Hanging Tree, the Arcane Laboratory, Smoking Room Portals, Smoke and Mirrors, the Aviary, Feeling, Outside Inside, Light Bending, Time and Care, and the Puzzle Plinth. At the very end, you get items and creatures. Now, it's a 21 page PDF, but that's in spread, or in the sort of spread form. Uh, it's at least 30, I would say 33, 34 pages in the actual PDF itself, or in the actual book, booklet itself. So I highly recommend you guys check this one out. If you're interested in little puzzles and riddles that have visual elements that have um, really been really thought out very, very well, I, I would I would you know, recommend you guys check it out. I, I particularly like the Arcane Laboratory and Light Bending. I think those two were really cool. But all of them have a cool feel and I think they would all work. I don't know if they would all work with every group, which is why I don't think I would run this as just one tower. You could certainly do that. You could certainly have it be one tower. But I think rather it's a way of thinking about it is like, you know, it's, it's sort of the, the the form of the booklet is just, you know, as a tower. But the individual puzzles are what you use in a dungeon. If you feel, if you're kind of a puzzle dungeon kind of person or you want to throw in a puzzle to your dungeon, there are some really good ones. And a couple of them have very flexible solutions, which I'm, I'm keen on when it comes to puzzles. But like I said, I don't think they would all work with every room. One of them... One of the puzzles involves alcohol, or rather the solution involves knowing the differences between a couple kinds of alcohol, and uh, my part players would know that instantly. It wouldn't be a puzzle at all. They would just go, oh yeah, it's that, <laughs> because that's the kind of people I play for, or I run for. So, you know, you got to know your group. But uh, I would recommend checking this out. It's, it's very cheap. I'll put a link to below where you can get it. Um, inexpensive. And it's a great PDF. It's a great file. Um, I think at least you can maybe get it in print. I'm not sure about that, but... Um, but anyway, I'll put links below to where you can get it. Uh, the next one is the Sky Tower of Belkzos. This is 21 pages. Uh, the map is a Dyson Logos map, but it's a free product, and I think that's fine. And it's 
<clears throat> really good. It's a really good Dice and Logos map. So if, if you know Tales of Argosa, a low fantasy game, gaming second edition, it says our work in progress book, but it's now finished. Um, you can you, you kind of get a sense of what this is. Format, layout, excellent. Really, really good. You got some rumors that go through the beginning. Um, get some research on if, if the party conducts research, what they can find out about the tower. And I think that's really cool. Um, maybe increasingly important information. Uh, how to get there. There's a mountain trek. And some reaction, uh, random encounters if you might run into them. So there's some scorn, which are kind of like the orc beast men things. You have the wyvern as a hermit, a rock slide, a tribe, or an ambush. So some great random encounters to run into. Uh, there is the tower exterior reaching the sky tower and it's floating just off the cliff. So about 40 feet from it. It's stationary. And it turns out, of course, the secret is that it's not just a tower. It's not just a wizard's tower. It's actually an alien spaceship. Now this is a sword and sorcery game, Tales of Argosa. And there is certainly an element in some sword and sorcery of science fiction. I think maybe a lot of sword and sorcery kind of blends with science fiction. If you're not into that, then this is going to be a lot harder of an adventure to use because it's it's not just like kind of accidentally alien. It's pretty clearly in spaceship, and there are aliens, like and it's it's kind of runs through and through the adventure. You could adapt it if you wanted, but it would just be harder. You might as well take the map and make your own dungeon at that point. But if you're not worried about some science fiction in your D and D or in your in your fantasy gaming, then I think this is a great adventure. There's some alien gear, and there's some really cool bits of alien gear here. Here's the sky tower itself, and the map is super well laid out, right? You've got uh, just you know all the numbers of the rooms on here, and you've got another breakdown over here, so the cutaway image and the actual floor images, as well as what's on each floor. You've got the specter here in two, and the various captives in the pods that are floating around it. Uh, laser in 3A, the Sturge is there, the Verg in 4B, the Chalk in 4C, two Chalk. Gas in 5B, other Verg in 6, and then Ooze in 7. It just tells you right there on the map where everything is. And so if you've read through it once, you keep the map open, you can remember basically what's in each room. And then there's a blank one if you want. Tower events. So one of the things I like about this is that the tower wakes up. You have a dungeon tally, it gets more and more and more uh, wakeful. And as it gets to a certain point, things can start to happen. And so here's a table for what happens if it gets to that point. And then you have the general interior and then the room format. And there are sort of like um little image tags to tell you what is being described and i think it's you'll see it actually works out really well so for example the storage is dimly lit has a little eye that's what you're supposed to describe there if you're in terms of sight and then under uh, 2a is darkness it's very dark near blind and there's an odd chill in the air it's what you can feel i like that i mean you instead of just saying having a little like you know flavor text or something like that you just have it and you can describe it however you'd like but it tells you there what the tags of the room are and then again it goes below and you're going to get that stuff sort of anyway but just at a glance you have the tags of the room it's a really good idea it's it's sort of like doubling down on this most important information first what do the senses immediately tell you and then bolding bullet points uh, to tell you, and, and parenthesis, to tell you more about what's coming actually going on, the reasons behind things. So why is it completely dark in here? In parenthesis, it tells you, because the emergency lights have failed, and there's very minimal ambient light coming from 3A. That's really cool. Really cool. I like the layout here. I also like this game's dedication, this adventure's dedication to the random reaction role. So there's a specter here, but it doesn't say anything about his relation to you. In fact, it says, well, if he likes you, then this. And if he doesn't like you, well, he's probably going to fight you. So, you know, uh, there's a reaction table built right in to his stat block there. Uh, 2 through 7, he's hostile. 8 through 9, he's malevolent. 10 through 12, he's curious. Uh, 2 through 6. So he's very likely to be hostile or malevolent. Very unlikely to be curious, but he might be curious. You can get the magic item he has. There are some capture pods with some creatures inside. You have a female Thuel named Garya of the Stone Tribes, a giant toad, an elf from the Second Age who's deceased with one valuable. Uh, you've got some winged snakes, some sturges, a roper, and Runk, the ogre mage with one eye. And if no one has been released by the time the party reaches here, a random pod glitches and releases, releases its captives. So you roll randomly for which, which one breaks out. Sometimes they might be good. I mean, it sounds like... Uh, Garya or Garja of the Stone Eyes tribe and uh, the Ogre Mage might all might both be 
you know, communicative, but the roper, sturges, and winged snakes, the giant toad, probably won't be. You've got some laser traps, some sturge nests, some viewing screens, stasis pods. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool. We've got some aliens here. The Verg are seven foot tall aliens from a distant galaxy sporting four tentacle arms, tripod feet, two eyes, with a no discernible head or mouth. That's what you've got on the cover illustration and this little guy down here. Highly intelligent and, emotion and emotional, communicating by way of deep body ver verberations that are clearly audible. Um, they do share thoughts similar to curiosity, anger, greed, and jealousy. Interesting. Um, you've got the engine hole, gas cloud, the med pod, the engine room, and then the aftermath. What happens if you um, avenge, bell exhaust, and kill the two remaining Virg? The Spectre allows them to take the cosmetic amulet and vanishes forever. Um, the ship finally restores enough systems to depart and blasts off for its home galaxy after a few days. And after the party departs the tower. So it's not hanging around. There's a sentient ooze at the very end. You've got some of the stuff at the end here. Dungeon events and how this works. Um, and uh, how it ta how it you know tallies up. And then some designer thoughts on that, which is really cool. I like to see that. And then you get, you get some random characters at the back if you want to run this down. This is a level 4 adventure, it looks like, so it's not a starter adventure. So having some pre-made characters for it isn't a bad idea. And they look pretty cool. You know, a little a piece of art for them each as well. And that is it. The Sky Tower of Elksos. I highly recommend you guys check that out. It's really cool. And it's a great Argosa adventure. It says a sandbox adventure. I'm not sure exactly why it says that, unless it just means sort of like there's a... a, a sort of playground approach to the dungeon itself. It's not really a sandbox in terms of like a region or anything like that. There are some random encounters and it's an, like an implied area, but that's pretty minor. All right, um, let's talk about this last one, which is Let Us Build a Tower, which is a quote from the Book of Genesis, I believe, uh, when, uh, when in reference to the Book of the Tower of Babel. This is a really fantastic adventure. I love this a lot. Now, this is obviously the backer preview draft version 0.1. It's not for sale or distribution, but... Um, it's mostly finished, and you guys can pre-order it now. So I thought I'd go through it at this point. It's, it's available for pre-order. Um, if it weren't available for pre-order, I'd probably hold off, because some final editing hasn't been done. And I think that they said that the table of contents is going to be hyperlinked, <laughs> which is important for me, and it's not right now. But otherwise, I think it is all finished, and the, the, the basic you know content of it is all here, and I think it's really worth checking out. So this is a few things. It is both an adventure, it is a toolbox, it's a setting, and it's a system. The system is very kind of like left to the end. It's not the most important part of this adventure. The most important part is the adventure itself. So what is it? It says it's a role-playing game for 2 to 12 players. 12 players, that sounds like an awful lot to be sitting around the table. But the goal of this is you're, you're throne seekers trying to enter the ever-changing Tower of Babel. Try to make your way to the top of it and seize the throne of heaven, which is up there. King Nimrod, the mighty hunter, ruled an empire, um, etc., etc., moves on. How do we play? <laughs> Essentially, you have this cursed, chaotic, twisting tower that's always changing. Um, and the people there, their language is, is messed up, the, the, their forms are messed up. It's like this really interesting, it's a really interesting setting. And it's also set in you know, a mythic Bronze Age, so it's... Uh, you know, you're dealing instead of a, instead of dragons, you're dealing with chimeras and uh, manticores, right? That sort of thing, because it's you know, Babel, the city of a thousand tongues. You begin just outside it, and so it's this sort of cursed city. And so there's you know, really cool descriptions of the city, really cool pieces of art throughout the book. The city of a thousand tongues, the cursed city. Um, by day, Throne Seekers can move about mostly empty, dusty streets without much fear of assault. There are some people here, there's some caravans here, there's some... But at night, crazy stuff starts happening. There's horrible creatures, and there's things coming out of the tower, and there are the cursed populations, what remains of the cursed populations. Um, most people leave. And it's like people are leaving actively, so there's only a handful of people left already. And people leave most every day and they give it up a caravan. But it was one of the biggest cities in the world before, so it's a huge metropolis and it's slowly been, uh, falling apart. It's a great description of a ruined city. And there are some places here. Uh, there's the Shattered Shrine, there's the Exodus Caravanus, Caravanserai, Caravanserai, I think is how you say that, um, with what people are selling there and the merchants who are there and what they might ask you to do from the tower. So quests before they leave, right? We need you to retrieve a treasure from a trap or we need you to find a lost citizen. 
um, Siduri as well, which is one of the last taverns still active in the city with the rumors you can have there, and Yoktan's Forge, a guy who can uh, serve a, uh, you know, can serve you as a blacksmith. And then you get the Tower of Babel itself, how to navigate it, the tower exterior, tower interior, exploration activity, and resting in it. The inhabitants of the tower, languages, what you might run into with the confusion of tongues works, and then the names of all of those people. And if you want an anachronistic name, you certainly can get one. Um, here is the people worshipping the tower outside. There's some people worshipping the tower. And now here's how the chamber actually, here's how the tower actually works. You roll randomly. Now again, page XX. So things haven't actually been finished yet. Right? When it actually gets finished, those will all be uh, listed. But for now, the way it works is you have particular kinds of chambers. Right? The Garden of Earthly Delights, the Grand Bazaar, the Antediluvian Menagerie, the Noble Mausoleum, the Holding Cells, the Grand Stairway, Builder's Tomb, the Grand Stairway, another Grand Stairway, Gates of Hell, the Labyrinth of Lost Souls, the Cursed King's Tomb, Reroll and Repeats, you can only find it once. The Stairway to Heaven, Reroll, uh, repeats, reroll Repeat results as D20 plus D6 plus 9. Um, so, you can find those things, right? You can, you, can, you can find the Stairway to Heaven, but only if you reroll and find some stuff um and it's just it's really cool because you're rolling a d20 plus your floor so which floor are you want from the first floor you roll a d20 plus one means you can only get to the high temple of the fallen one so you cannot find the stairway of heaven early on you're only going to find it once you get to the bottom and then the features of each room right so you roll for this and then you roll for the features of the room and then you get the doors for the room the traps that are available there, the events that can be happening there the different encounters you can have, the reactions of those encounters and the mannerisms if you need, divine transformations if one has occurred, and cosmetic transformations, as well as some treasures. Weapons, weapon enchantments, armor, armor enchantments, weapon armor curses. Search the body table, search the stones table, and then mythic artifacts so you can find particular artifacts to be found in here. Nimrod's crown of glory, the storm lord's spear, Shamash's scepter of judgment. How magic works, there's Babel stones, which are cool. Um, roll d50 for a Babel stone or invent one. Weighs one load, right? Um, and there's a rule for how much the load is, or OSR games, 10% of the char average character's inventory. Um, yeah, really cool. How spellcasting works, the rite of sealing, spell power, and example spells, because you can kind of copy your own spells from the tablets. And then here are the chambers. Right? If you roll the amphitheater, what kind of amphitheater is it? A uh, gauntlet, a gigantic pool, a racing circuit, a raised stage, or the antechamber of anticipation. What kind is it? Is it a wine sacristy? Is it an oratory of desire? Is it builder's tomb? Is it the bathhouse of unbecoming? Here's the antediluvian menagerie. What kind of beasts of Eden are in it? Because they were beasts of Eden, right? These extinct things that once lived in the Garden of Eden are now here. Uh, and they're huge, giant, powerful animals. So what are they? Because they're in the Antediluvian Menagerie. The Balcony of All Beholding. Banquet Hall. Bathhouse of Unbecoming. The Blood Pits. So essentially you're building this... this, this every time you enter, it's going to be a different tower. You're going to find different floors, and you're going to find different entrances, and you're going to go up, and it's going to be different each and every time. Even if you find the same room, you're going to roll differently on it. You might find the same room. But even then, it's going to be changed because of the encounters that'll be there, because of the creatures that'll be there, whatever. These really bizarre angels and demons and things. The bats of met metamorphosis. Here are the features you can find in each room. And there's lots of cool ones. It's a really interesting way of doing a dungeon, right? Because you have um, essentially you as the dm are not going to know you could roll ahead of time and in fact that's one of the things you might want to do is roll ahead of time but uh, you don't necessarily know that you're going to um now one of the things that make i find so fascinating about this is uh well that's so cool creepy creatures those are the i think that's the proper description of what an angel looks like in the bible um or at least in the old testament like in the book of ezekiel and stuff they're not little cherubs you know Fat kids with wings. Um, they're weird. Um, then you get the Beasts of Eden, and you get the Behemoth, the Bull of Heaven, the Cannibal Nobles, because people used to live in the towers, right? Used people used to live higher up, and uh, as the war and the curse and all that stuff, they went crazy. Now they're gone cannibal. The cats, you gotta be kind to cats. 
Chimeras Usum. And there's really cool ones, particular Chimeras. Like that guy. The Cockatrice, Dog Folk, Fallen Ones. Really cool demon things. Fish Folk. <laughs> Golems, Greater Serpents. Legendary Revenants. And you've got a bunch of famous ones in here. Uh, Gilgamesh, the Hero King. Eve, the First Woman. Enoch, the Taken. Adam, the First Man. Cain, the First Killer. Abel, the First Killed. Creatures. Leviathan, Living Statue. The Lost Urchin. The Lurkers. Great creatures that you can use in any game, obviously. Nimrod, the Cursed King. But you don't have to. The Untombed, Horrible, Wayward Priests, Wild Dogs, which is Ziz. That's cool. And then Mythic Shinar, which is the Adventures Beyond Battle. So if you want to set this, if you want to play a whole campaign here, you want to make this one big dungeon, but there's a bigger region. Here's all the rules you need. Here's all the locations. Life in the cities of Mythic Shinar, travel, weather. Uh, here you have the Mountains of Kur, Upper Empire, Shinar itself, and you've got various old cities, Ur, Uruk, Eridu, Babel's down there. Um, Arada, Hamazi, uh, Ekur, Karana, Nanua, yeah, some great ones. And then across the Sea of Sand, you've got Kemet and Canaan. Down the Great Salt Sea, you have uh, Dilmun. To the east, you have Elam. The northwest, you have the Hittites, although I think that's much, much later. You have the legends, right? So uh, at the bottom, you have the city-states, antediluvian ruins, and royal tombs. And you can see that there are lots of antediluvian ruins on here, so you could expand this into a much bigger game if you wanted. Events and encounters in Shinar. Great piece of art there. Really awesome piece of art. I love that. Cities and sites. So you've got the antedilu antediluvian ruins, um, and you've got uh, all the different cities you might run into. Royal tombs you can run into. Seeds of adventure. So there's a couple campaigns. This Tale of Two Sorcerers, The Alchemist's Offer, Arata Restored, the House of Lapis, House of Stars. And then how to get started, advice to throne seekers, and how to play this particular game if you want to play this as the, the game room. You can always use any system, but this is the system the game suggests. It's left in the last 30 pages, last few pages actually. And if you see, that's it. Page 116, page 117. And you have character sheets, great piece of art there. And each of the classes, the warrior, the priest, the thief, and the scribe. How to play, basic rules for role-playing, rolling tests, combat rounds. It's very simple, very straightforward. You get it all just in a few pages. Then there's the appendix. That's it. Now, one of the things that I... Oh, and then there's some appendices at the end. Quick start for players with some weapons and gear and stuff and a character sheet. Great piece of art here at the end. Okay. Now, one thing I want to show you guys is this fantastic um, uh, website. Let's build a tower. So the way it works is you can generate each floor. So you can regenerate the tower. And now you have a first floor of the tower, right? You've got a garden, the grand stairway, a menagerie, the vats, and the grand bazaar. And you've got what was there, the, the feature of each floor along with the room. Then if you need, you can click on the chamber and it gives you the whole description of each. And then you can roll for an event if you want and you encounter three cannibal nobles. They're injured or dying. They seem curious yet cautious. Or you can do a careful event. A corridor collapses. Erase one of the chamber's exits. Right? And then if you want, you go up a floor, you go up a floor. You can go up another floor. And I can show you right how to go. That's how to go all the way back down to the base floor. Um, you connect to different rooms, right? It shows you how they connect. This connects to these. This connects to those. I think that's amazing. And you can see what's in each floor. So you have, if you don't want to do it ahead of time, this is just a version of 0, uh, 0 0.1 beta. But man, if you're not interested, so once this is all finished, this is still their beta, it's not done. But man, once it is, this is going to be so cool. I think this is just a fantastic, fantastic tool to add in. Um, because now you just have, uh, yeah, you just have this amazing generator for the whole everything you need. So you have the book, yes, but you also have all this stuff. And then you can click on this stuff and I don't know where this takes you yet. I'm not gonna click on it, but anyway, I think that's awesome and I, I hope you guys do too. I highly recommend you check that out. So anyway, we have Let Us Build a Tower, which is just a fantastic toolbox, the Sky Tower of Belksos, and the Tower. 
hope this has been interesting to you all. i'll put links below to where you can get them all and i'll see you guys in another video.